I went for six months to the California School of Herbal Studies and I studied with, with um, Rosemary Letzard, that's why I know her. And so when I came back, I got, I had so much strength that I quit my job, I published the book, I started to look for the herbs, I planted a garden and I didn't bother me whatever somebody wants to say. That's the, you know, the, the change. And that's what, what, uh, what, what happened. Very okay. I feel, you know, like a grace that um, that we can finally um, start to be open with with herbalism and spiritual herbalism. You know, and it's not only my part, but it's also the part that the world is turning to to more spiritualism. You know that people can find it, and so they start talking. So everybody is opening about that, and that then I have like, information to give. You know, there is, there is information to, that people can learn about that part also. A part that has been a taboo for, for so long time. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What has the garden meant for the people of Curaçao? A lot. You know, people come, they do um, the herb walks, and they see that the, the plants and herbs, that they, they, they clean the garden, they have, they have the medicinal plants in the garden. Because all the houses, even so small, have gardens. So people have these plants in the garden. They, they can see them everywhere they, they, they go. So that's the knowledge they get. And so they start you know, preserving the plants that they need. And that means also to take care of Mother Earth, to love Mother Earth, to respect Mother Earth. That's the change that you want to bring also to children, that they start respecting Earth, respecting the plants, use them, don't abuse, you know, that's what, what we try to do. That's beautiful. So how has your life changed since you've become an herbalist? How has herbalism changed you? You know, as a teacher, you have a new car, you have everything in your house, the most beautiful things you want. And then at quitting your job, you start to whatever you have put in the garden. And then you're going to see that you don't need so much material things. <laughs> there is a lot that you don't need. So, yeah. you know, it's it's a, it's a simple being, very simple and being being very, you know, um, um, nederig. What is nederig? Modest. Modest, mm -hmm. and you know, feel mm -hmm. very, very at, at ease. You know, knowing that you have to learn so much still. And how has herbalism in Curaçao changed since you came? <laughs> so people a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of change, a lot of change. Um, um, people planting their own garden with plants, you know, learning. Young people, when they come to do the tour now, you know, they, they already know things. It's very beautiful to see that. You use sounds to make up the word. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? That's what you use the sounds to make up the word. Ba. Ta. And I heard you saying ishi. ishi. You okay. say ishi. Ishi mean okay. Is that you? Yes, yes, that's what you say <laughs> ishi. I tried to remember the words that I heard you saying. You and then you have, you have these like seven, these like the weeks, 26 weeks. 26, 26 weeks, which is the year. Wow. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And who let? That's the no and to let. So, Sarasa, Miss, it is. Sabbat. Sabbat. Is that seven? Is that the seven? Four, five, seven, six, is seven. Sabbat. seven. Yes, Sabbat. Yeah, Sabbat. that makes complete sense. Simeon. You, you can go to a plant and just touch it. And if you're in harmony with it, it can diagnose you. 
mm. and say everything that's wrong with you. Mm. And you can just take that and it will give you the exact balance. Keep that peace. And you make a tea with that, it will give you the exact what you need. It will balance it in that leaf that you pick. It's intelligent, you know. And it goes, so when you take that, you are getting it bal everything balanced in a way to suit what your ailment is. Mm -hmm. Every day you come and pick from that plant, it knows you know. So that's the plant you would pick if you were sick. Mm -hmm. See, and all herbs cure everything. Mm. So, Baba Rasan, in your experience, based on what you're saying, if you went and you touched the plant and you had a certain relationship with that plant, it will work with you in a way differently than it would yes, work with me. Yes, yes, yes. They are intelligent. Herbs is a living thing, intelligent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the people in the community eating supermarket food. Supermarket food not designed for make people live long, it's designed for make people die quick, give them all kind of ailments. Mm -hmm. You know, them have to them then them go to the medical system, them give them all kind of drugs and turn them in zombie and us. Have them on a string. See? All these ailments, arthritis, rheumatism, gout, blood pressure, diabetes. Any doctor that cannot stabilize things like blood pressure, diabetes, asthma in 30 days, just playing a game with people. You understand? I didn't go to school and I know what to do about that. I, logically, I know that it's from the asthma. Food you're eating, a lot of mucus producing food, the mucus settling the breathing passages, block the ear from going into the lungs. Ain't no big thing that my baby can understand that. But we know that through observation. And also the air. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you get nervous and anything now, and that the breathing passage tighten up some more, along with that mucus there, the breathing passage gets smaller. That's when you're gasping for breath. That's when them, them say that's an asthma attack now. Ain't no problem. Just stop eating the food that's putting in the mucus and clean out what's already there. You cure asthma within 30 days. You know, it's interesting because I've been experimenting with that. One of the things I did was to put it in alcohol and then try and take the alcohol. Uh -huh. And I, I had no effects immediately. None. And I was like, I guess. Um, spice bush has, it grows some little red berries, you know, as it grows up. And those little red berries are really, really um, also very aromatic. That's where part of where it gets its name. And it used to be used in, instead of allspice. Mm -hmm. You could so, um, like dry it and use it on food? Exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You, don't you can even food. use this in food, you know, because it will give it a little sweet and, and aromatic flavor. Mm -hmm. So, um, spice bush, like all the aromatics, is really good for fevers. And it was actually used for typhoid fever in the old days. And um, it's, it's good for flus. It's a blood purifier. If you break off the little twigs and so on and drink, drink it with the leaves, you get blood purifying action as well. So it's really, really excellent for that. With the, with the elder, you can make uh, tea out of the flowers and also wine out of the flowers and tea and also wine out of the berries. It makes a very delicious wine. It's also very good for arthritis. And elderberries is, um, when you see the Sambucol extract in the, in the health food stores, so they're selling for many, 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 many dollars. It's actually made from the berries, the dark red berries of the elder. Yeah. Mm. This smells good. Is it sassafras? Did yes. you already say that? <laughs> it is sassafras. The other thing to note about this plant is that the leaves have three shapes. Sassafras. We have one with a trident, right? And one with like a mitten shape. And then you have a third that's the oval shape. So the only other plant I've seen like that is, is, is uh, mulberry. But this is kind of rare and, and it's an easy way to identify it. Of course, mulberry doesn't have the scent, right? So it has a lovely lemon scent and a lovely lemon flavor. So it makes very, very delicious um, lemon, uh, kind of iced tea.
You know, you put a lime in it, or some honey, or some maple syrup, and it's really very, very good. And of course, sassafras um, is considered also spring tonic, but it is the bark of the root that's usually used, and it has that sort of reddish color. And it's very good, for, again, for the liver. Except for the liver, it's good for arthritis. It used to be used to treat syphilis. It's a blood purifier, essentially. And um, the leaves also have some of those properties, but the leaves as an aromatic plant, any, any aromatic plant, almost all of them, you notice will be used to treat fevers and colds. And um, this is good for the stomach too, very good for the stomach. And it's used to thicken gumbo. If you make the tea of it, it has a little bit of a thick, the tea is actually a little thick, you know, so kind of strange. Well, I think, you know, that it's important to know about the herbs that grow around you because those are the healers that have specifically, you know, planted themselves in your neighborhood to work with you. So um, at the same time, there's some herbs from far that are very powerful and, you know, they're, they're meant to travel, mm. you know, ginseng. So the land if you test them, it's from what I'm hearing. But um, in this neighborhood, a burdock keeps telling, you know, and it's funny you have the burdock seeds. I, I'm going to mention burdock. Burdock is really amazing. Um, and I'd say that because there are a bunch of things you could do with burdock. You can actually, the leaves are very bitter. Not very bitter, they're pretty bitter. But you can boil them, drink the water as tea and then use them as a kind of green, you know, it's quite tasty green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the vegetable, it, wor it works nicely. The seeds are a great wash for measles and, you know, other um, erupted diseases. Burdock is very cooling. This is a very hot environment. There's a lot of heat in the city. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of t kind of stress, a lot of motion. And burdock is, is cooling, slightly cooling in its energy. The burdock root can be a food, you know, you can cook it, cook it down in stews, but it also can, is a, is a medicine that works gently over a long period of time to purify the blood, cleanse the skin. It's great for the kidneys, it's a good kidney tonic. So I'm thinking, you know, a lot of people, because they have hypertension or diabetes, would need to have the kidney energy addressed. Um, it's good for hypertension too. It helps lower lower um, blood blood pressure. So it's, you know there are a lot of people here with that issue. Um, it's got that powerful magnetic energy. Excuse me. To the same as that. Um, yeah, do you want to start again? Okay, so, um, it's, yeah, it's great, it's, it, you know, it's, um, very alkaline, huh. um, okay. yeah, it's good for the liver too, you know, so it's got this whole variety of, of uses that I think would be really helpful uh, that are really helpful in this environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah so plantain is great too <laughs> you, yes. so is dandelion mm -hmm. just one the burdock that was that okay but that's just for here okay that's just for here um the other group i was going to ask you about is not fair so i'm well, not going to ask you i should say dandelion oh <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put that in there, right? Yeah, dandelion. because you know why? Mm -hmm. Dandelion is such a wonderful liver gallbladder herb. And gallbladder is about decision making, and we're always making so many decisions here. And the liver gets like over um, stressed here because of all the toxins and because of all the anger. And so, dandelion, and it's also blood purifying, it's also a laxative, the root, um, but a mild one. And then also the leaves are food, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, 
Yes, yes, I understand. The high blood pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, no, I understand. That's um, they could they could mix the two. (laughs) Yes. That's what (laughs) they do. They grow always grow close together too. Today we were blessed to visit the Hattie Carthen Community Farmers Market and Garden, which is started by Yodette Fleming, who we will be talking to in a little while. Welcome. I want her to work in the market. Like in your case, you know what drove you back. It was that you saw something and you realized we can't live like this anymore. But in the community, you created this huge market. And you see people coming and saying, what's this? What's going on? You see the interest? And if so, why? What do you think it's about? Well, first of all, I believe that uh, systems are falling. So that uh, that is out there. So systems are falling one by one. So we have the financial system that is, is, is falling, that they're basically still trying to support it and still trying to cycle us out to support it. Um, so you have that system. And then the health system also has to fall, the pharmaceutical industries. Um, and that uh, system that they rigged up of symptomatic medicine, um, which is killing us, that system also has to fall. So it is a part of my understanding that I am here for those those uh, occurrences, um, that I am here to see them happen, and that a part of my work uh, has to do with helping to prepare people uh, to uh, for the paradigm shift, per se. Um, so with my herbal work on that level, uh, the herbs will uh, offer emotional support, will offer a lot of support in terms of consciousness expansion in humans. So that work is supporting the shift because a lot of people are going to have nervous breakdowns. A lot of people are going to have uh, uh, electrical uh, defenses that are being weakened in their circuitry. Um, their bodies are falling with the demise of all of these systems. So they need to find out new ways of being. How to manage toxic emotions. How to manage issues that we have, anger, anxiety, nerves, Uh, the women's bodies have been taken over, so controlling the women's uterus and the whole creativity.